Good morning, Bethany Church. Welcome to Bethany at Home. Pastor Granny here, and I'm very excited that you have joined us this morning. Now, we just have a few announcements for you before we dive into the rest of service. Starting off, we are on our last week of our Backpack Blast. So there's a lot of students in Stanford who, who are in need. So the church, we are here to step in and fill those needs uh, with backpacks, school supplies, or even a monetary donation. Our very last day that we are accepting these donations will be August 8th, this Saturday. Now, speaking on this Saturday, we have two events coming up on Saturday, August 8th. We have our church-wide worship service. We are very saddened to have to cancel uh, the last one due to weather, but this week we are very excited to partner with you guys in worshiping our Lord together. Now, next Monday, August 10th, the ladies' night will be doing the same thing right here outside of the church, uh, gathering, just building up that community of our ladies. Now, thank you guys from our, the bottom of our hearts for your continual giving. It is for your giving that our, uh, our possibility of reaching the hundreds and hundreds of people that we are reaching on a weekly basis through our online services are, uh, it's incredible. So you can continue to give at BethanyStanford.com. Now let's worship the Lord together as we prepare our hearts for what God has for his people.
meet us wherever we are.
thank you, Lord, for who you are. For you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. Lord, thank you for what you've done in our lives, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. We trust that you will be with us, that you will meet us here once again. We pray all these things in your name. We pray, amen. Did you ever have a conversation with someone that wasn't looking at you? For me, it's one of the most disheartening, disconcerting things is to have a conversation with someone that is not looking at me. In fact, there are times when that happens, I pause. I wonder if I should just stop. My self-esteem wanes. My identity is in a crisis. Has that ever happened for you? Not everybody's built that way. For some of you, it doesn't matter whether people are multitasking when you're trying to have a conversation with them. It could even be on the deeper meaning of life, and it doesn't phase you. There are others, they need to be locked in, they need your attention, they need your affection, they need to have constant eye contact, it can never wane. I actually think this is one of the reasons why we struggle in prayer. <laughs> I mean, like, we can't see him, and we're not really sure he even sees us. Like, like, is he paying attention? Is he watching? Is he really waiting? Is he really there? Maybe he could actually be, like, nearby, that we could see him, that we could see his face, and really know whether he's paying attention. Although, ironically, think about it, if you could see him, if he was, like, in bodily form, then he'd be confined, he'd be limited in his ability, his presence, and his power. Even Jesus, when he was here, confined to a body, although fully God and fully human, when confined to a body on his way off of the planet to go prepare a place for us, he said to his followers, it's better that I would go, for I send a comforter in my place, one that would not be bound by time and space, is really the effect of what he's saying. But among other things, prayer can be well, intimidating sometimes. We wonder whether we're choosing the right words. Are we just caught up in idle or trite words? Uh, is God really listening to what we're saying? Are we praying the word of God, praying the will of God? Are, are we finding a place to start? I think some people's prayer life, it's as if they're trying to figure out how to, how to play a game of double dutch. Do, do we go now? Do we go now? What's the right rhythm? Do we start here or what do we do? I think the greatest obstacle or hindrance is we can't see him. Is he really paying attention? Is he really with us? Is he really for us? As we embark on a four-week series on prayer, I want you to want to pray. I want to take the fear out of it. I want to take the complication out of it. I want us to continue or maybe begin the conversation of prayer. In fact, I want us to take our cue from this um, narrative, if you will, this audience and it's first found this way, Christmas in August. How many of you are ready for Christmas? I'm not a big fan of the heat, and so when it gets high humidity, high heat, I can't wait for us to continue to get through summer, go on to the cooler days of fall, and my favorite season by far is Christmas. So let's peek around the corner a little bit, Christmas in August, and there are wise men that hear that Jesus has been born. Does anybody remember that? When the wise men, three kings, hear that Jesus has been born, and they see this star that announces, and on some level they say this, it was sung about in the song, O Come All Ye Faithful, they say to one another, O come, let us adore him. Can I just help you that prayer is just going and coming closer to who he is? It is navigating the distance. It is understanding and appreciating that God doesn't want there to be a distance between us in him. He makes and he made the first move towards us. What will our loving reply and response be back to him? So the wise men help us with this where they say, let's go, let's go closer. The shepherds just before that, they also have a moment where they have an angelic choir that announces that Jesus has come and they say to one another, let's go. And I want you to know today that praying is simply going and growing closer. Come on, is anybody with me on that today? That praying is very simple. We have made it incredibly complicated. And I want to take some of that out for us over these next few weeks. In fact, what prayer really is, is this. Check out this statement. Prayer moves us from secondhand experience 
to first-hand encounter. That's what we get from the wise men. That's what we see from the shepherds, that they go closer. We try to have rehearsed prayers. We want to say a prayer, have somebody else say a prayer for us, but it's just having a conversation. It's just looking into the fullness of what we know regarding his character, his attributes, his nature, looking right to his heart as he has communicated it to us in other times, in other moments. And in this moment, leveraging the moment that we have to simply rend our hearts and to tell him what's going on in our lives. Let's build out the conversation together. In fact, as part of our previous series, I shared this statement, and it's apropos for this one as well. Uh, it's generally attributed to either uh, Ignatius or Francis of Hippo, but there's no consensus as to who actually brought this quote, but I deliver it for us today. Pray as if everything is dependent upon God, and work or act as if everything is dependent upon you. I don't know where I got this next model from. It's possible that it was largely inspired by that previous quote. But nearly every day, this next framework is how I pray. It's somewhat an amalgamation of the Lord's Prayer as recorded in Matthew. But it's something that has been a great tool for me as I pray every day. And what I do is I pray over the Word of God. I set out to be in the word every day, and I use these four letters, this, an, this acronym or anagram, if you will, regarding ACTS. And it reminds me when I see these, I have, a, I have a page that helps me to pray through this every day. As I see it, I'm reminded of the ACTS that God wants to bring in my life, but also for me, the act of praying that it's not idle, it's not passive. There is an aspect of I'm trusting with great confidence. The scripture says in Hebrews, now let's therefore approach the throne of grace with great confidence. That's part of what praying is, to navigate that distance, to be confident to come closer to who he is. But there's also an aspect of that in my praying, there's not a passivity to it. There's an activity to my praying. There's an urgency, there's a dependency, there's a lean into who he is. And my desire is that you will want that for your lives. So this is how I pray it through. In each one of these four weeks, I'm going to pull out one of them and unpack it for us. So the four are, if you're taking notes in your app, uh, these are your fill-ins. Adore, letter A, confess, thanks, and supply. And so for today, I want us to look at the idea of to adore. I think a huge part of praying, in fact, I think it's, it's um, quite vital for us, is to pray over an open word of God. This is what I know to be true, and I don't know where I heard this for the first time either. I can't uh, find who is attributed to this quote, but it's an incredible statement over our lives. It is this, praying the word of God is praying the will of God. I think we get tripped up as to if we're praying, is God gonna listen to us because maybe we're not praying the right things. But if you pray the word of God, simply the scripture, if you pray it, God will honor that word. I'm gonna show you that throughout our time together this morning. So as we pull on the letter A, which is for adore, I want us to have a working definition and then go to a scripture where I'll pull that out for us. To adore means this. We've already begun to establish it. Let me say it one more time. To adore is to go and grow closer to God. Come on, my friends. Do you know that that's God's desire for you? He wants you to know his heart. He wants to know your heart more. He wants to be found by you. He wants to be known by you. He wants to be loved by you. And this is what God wants to establish in our time of praying. I like when people ask me to pray for them. They'll say, Pastor, I need you to pray along with me. And more and more, I've gotten bolder to go, I will, but are you praying for your own situation, your own need? Are you praying for other people as well? Or are, only, or are you only taking the opportunity to pray when you have high urgency within your own life? Or are you taking the every opportunity to just want to get to know him more, regardless of whether you have urgent need? You and I have an urgent need to want to go closer to him and to find him. So let's unpack it this way. In the scripture that I want to point you to today regarding a door, I want you to see the attributes of God. 
Because I think if we know more about his heart for us and who he is, it will motivate us. It'll inspire us to want to pray. It won't feel like it's, it's something that we have to do. We'll want to do it. I now in my life, and I'm only a student of praying, I in no way claim expertise. But I've gotten to a point in my own faith journey, not because I'm a pastor, but because I'm a Christ follower. I literally cannot wait to have time with the Father every morning. It is how I start every day. I can't wait to see him awaken me to what he wants to do and awaken me to his glory. And I want you to see the attributes of God, namely that he is generous. This is who he is. And as we come off of a series regarding generosity on our own means, in our own behalf, I want you to see that he always makes the first move. It is who he is. He is a giver. Oh, not just of finances, and I believe he can do that. He is a giver of himself, a giver of his character, of his nature, and even his strong right arm on your behalf. So let's do it this way. Incredible scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. We actually split this portion of scripture uh, into two different messages. I did one as our conclusion of our previous series, and I thought, man, there's such good stuff on the cutting room floor. It's a great way to begin our series on prayer. So the Apostle Paul writes for the second time to the church at Corinth, and he says this at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, and God is able to bless you abundantly. Thank you very much for your time. I think that's all that we need, actually. That's all that we would really even need, isn't it? That God longs to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. The first thing I want you to see regarding the character of God, why you should want to pray, is that he can't wait to ennoble you. It's not a word we use very often, but it's an important one. When there's this phrase that says that there is a bounding generosity, did you see that there? That God is able to make all things abound to you. All things, all times, all needs. He is wanting to be the glory and the lifter of your head. He longs to raise your dignity in a world that has gone incredibly sideways at best, probably more so it has gone negative. Uh, We struggle with keeping our thought life intact. We struggle with keeping the faith. There is a God that longs to ennoble you to lift up your countenance, to lift up your spirit, to lift up your expectation. He longs to, when the world takes away dignity, he longs to raise it up. This is what God longs to accomplish over your life. He establishes your value and your worth, and we find it as we pray. Come on. And so the second part of that same passage, the next verse says this. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. And I left in there an insertion that Paul is quoting directly from Psalm 112 and verse 9. I wanted you to see it because there's this incredible aspect of this. The freely scattered means that God longs to see that which he will establish, see it take to flight, literally to levitate, literally to elevate in our lives. That when you pray and you bring a burden unto him and you begin to adore him, you begin to revere him, you begin to honor him, you begin to trust him. The Bible says that you can cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. That you literally give it to him and your prayer takes flight and it goes right to the throne room. I think that's an incredible principle and it leads us to this. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, bread for food, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. The second point is he longs to enlarge your life. Now let me ask a rhetorical question. Has your life ever felt a little saggy? Are you starting to get a little bit of kind of jiggly parts? Maybe physically, some jiggly parts spiritually. There's this incredible principle, and you find it in the Old Testament. Isaiah speaks of it, other writers as well, that God longs to enlarge the tent. And they knew what God was talking about because many times in their sojourn, they would live in, they would worship in tents. Come on, have you ever seen a tent that starts to get rained on and it starts to sag a little bit? 
Heat starts to kind of make the, the constructs dissipate a little bit. It starts to kind of turn inward a little bit. It starts to lose its tautness. It starts to lose its strength. The tent literally becomes weary. And someone would go along and they would gird up each one of the four posts of that tent, stretch it, enlarge it so that it could be sound once again. This is what God wants to do within your life. He can't wait to enlarge your life. I was so excited to tell you that today because I think it's a principle that we don't appreciate of what God wants to do. God doesn't want to diminish you. He doesn't want you uh, to lose your dignity. He wants not just to lift you up. He wants to enlarge your life. He wants to give you greater responsibility. He wants to give you greater treasure. He wants to give you greater opportunity. Come on, my friends. Do you believe that today, that the character of God, the attributes of God are these? He cannot wait to enlarge your life. He is our portion in this life and in the life to come. This is what he wants to do over your life. And we find it when we begin to adore him daily, and we find that he longs to enlarge. We, we begin to peek around the corner at his character for us. But Paul's not done yet. He concludes this portion with this incredibly rich verse, pun intended. You'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving unto God. You may have known this, but Paul is specifically speaking about money. That's how he starts out. He talks about living a generous life. But then he comes out of it, he backs up a little bit, and establishes a greater workable, working principle for our lives. He's saying, I need you to understand that he is generous in the way that he always makes the first move. He's generous that he uh, owns um, it all, and yet he lends it to us. He's generous. He'll always make the first move, and he wants us to live a generous life, but it's not just bound up in finances. It might be the first step, but you and I need to understand that he cannot wait to enrich our lives. Did you catch the phrase that it says, you'll be enriched in every way? Come on, that's an incredible principle that Paul establishes for the church at Corinth and still has life for us today. You and I need to be reminded that he cannot wait to enrich us in every way. I'm not sure if I said it with enough redundancy this morning, but he wants to enrich you in every way of your life. There's not an aspect of it that he cannot move by his power nor his presence. So let's go back through this for a moment. You don't have to go through the entire passage of scripture. I think these three trigger words of uh, ennoble, enlarge, and enrich will be enough for you as you walk back through it with me to, to bring a trigger for you to this end. We need to go back through as if you are reading these verses as part of your daily reading. And I don't think you have to separate your daily scripture reading and your praying. I believe that they, that they find life together. I have found my best praying is praying the scripture. I have found my best reading of the scripture is pulling it out in such a way that now it is praiseworthy and prayer worthy over my life. I have the attention span of a gnat. And I need the scripture to guard and to guide my thinking. It's how I pray best. I'm not an intercessor. Sorry, I'm just not. I've, I've worked up the spiritual muscles that I can pray for longer periods of time, but I have to pace, I have to move around, I gotta be all over the place to pray. And the best way that I know how to pray is I always have an open scripture. It guards me against being repetitive. It guards against idle chatter. It guards against praying selfish prayers. I pray the word of God because I wanna pray the will of God. And so, as we move to close this morning, I want you to see this. That if we were to walk back through this together, let's say that you read this on your own and you want to incorporate it into your prayer time, you would be reminded that God wants to lift up your life and it would, it would encourage you. Man, he wants to ennoble my life. God, I thank you. There, there are places that I go, my boss will take away my dignity. Sometimes I feel like my, my spouse uh, takes that away from me. There's not respect or or. Um, mutual submission, there's something is amiss, but God, you ennoble my life, and so I want to come closer to you, for you bring me worth and value. Then you'd move back through that he longs to enlarge your life. God, in the increased opportunity and responsibility that I have, I offer it to you. 
I, ca- I can't do any of this without you, but you want to enlarge my life. For whatever reason, you count me worthy. For whatever reason, you have not disqualified me. And so God, I, I need you today as I come closer to your heart. Reveal your heart for me that you long to enlarge my opportunity. And finally, practically, financially, you might need to pray it. Maybe you feel in lack in a few different areas of your life, but as you were to walk back through, you'd see that he longs to enrich you. Come on, wouldn't that be encouraging to you to see that he longs to enrich your life? So as we close this morning, I want you to see this. I want you to have something as a takeaway to apply into your life these next few days. Seven days in a row for seven minutes, I want you to focus on seven reasons to honor God. Here's what I mean. Let's say that we were walking through this passage together. That's what you picked up on Monday morning. You would take seven minutes to read it and begin to pray it. Maybe you can just remember what seven things you find in that scripture, what it, what it brings to memory, what it begins to spark within your life. Or maybe you begin to write it down. But you begin to say this, God, I adore you because, God, I adore you because you made the first move for me. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. Lord, I I honor you and I come closer to you because your word says that you will be found by those that seek you. I come closer because in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. I come closer because your love is like none other. And you'd go through and just remind yourself of the, the aspects of God over your life and just begin to tell him, You don't have to have flowery prayers. You don't need to filter it. You don't need to edit it down. But just to come to him and say, God, I just want to come closer. In the same way the wise men weren't content to just see a star in the distance, they had to go see him. Oh, do you want to see him daily? In the same way the shepherds didn't want to just have an announcement of an angelic choir, they say to one another, let's go and see he who has been born king and savior and messiah. Come on, you have an open invitation the daily to go seek him while he may be found. He is worthy of it all and he can't wait to be found by you. If all of us called him and at the same time, you'd still get the full measure of the Godhead. This is his love. This is his life. This is his power. This is his presence over you. So I dare you to be on a 777 journey with me this next week. Just do that as your, as your litmus test, as a beta test for this week. Seven minutes, seven days, seven reasons. And if you go beyond seven, then dial it back again. We don't want any people fired up for God, okay? So just bring it down. Come on, seven, seven, seven. For he is worthy of it all. So let's come adore him. Yeah.